Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create stamp style distress textures in Photoshop. You're going to save these as PNG images so they can be used in any application, even Office applications. Before we get started with this tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. I had a client that contacted me recently who wanted to create this sort of distressed stamped effect and they wanted to be able to do this in, for example, a program such as Microsoft Office. So what they wanted was a textured overlay that they could place on the top of any image inside practically any application including programs like Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint and so on. So what I did was I started with a sign and I have created two texture overlays. One of them is a sort of just general texture overlay and the second one is sort of scratches at an angle. And I'm going to show you step by step how you can create each of these overlays in Photoshop. You're going to save them as PNG files so that you can open and use them in any application. And better still, the images that you'll use to create these textures from are free to download from the internet. So I'm going to give you the download links for each of these images so you can download them, open them in Photoshop and then follow along with this tutorial. Before we get started with this tutorial, there are two textures that I'm using to create these effects and both of them are free to download. So the first one is coming from a photographer whose work is really really fantastic. It's called Skeletal Mess and it's available on Flickr and he produces um, textures of the day and this is one of the textures of the day and it's just really really beautiful texture and we're going to use that for the first technique. For the second technique we're headed over to Texture King and there are a set of plastic rubber textures here and the one we're looking for is this one. It's a sort of scratched plastic look and we're going to use that as our second texture. So both of those textures free to download on the web so that you can download them and follow along with the tutorial. So now we know what it is that we're seeking to achieve. We're going to create the first of the textures and I've opened the first of the images here in Photoshop. Now the first thing to do is to get rid of the background layer. We'll get rid of the fact that it's a background layer. So I just drag the lock icon and drop it onto the trash can and that frees up the layer. Then we're going to create a filter because what I found was that when I opened this image to create the effect, the first thing I did was to go to the filter gallery and as luck would have it, the very first filter that I saw was exactly the one that I needed to use and the settings were actually pretty good. Now I'm just going to cancel out of here for a minute because I've noticed that my foreground and background colors are not the defaults. So I'm going to press the letter D or click this icon to restore the default black and white because the filter that we're using will use those colors and we want it to be black and white. So let's go back into filter, filter gallery. And the filter I've selected here is in the sketch area and it's called photocopy. So I'm just going to fit the image into the view here so that we can see it. And what I've got is detail set at around 10 or 11 and darkness at about 28 to 30. Now these are not fixed in concrete, these values. You can just use something that looks good to you. What I was trying to do was to get a good mix of black and white because one of these colors, either black or white, is going to be my texture. The other one is going to be dropped out. So I was looking for a nice sort of spread of those in the image. So I'm going to click OK. Now I want to make a threshold adjustment because right now what I've got is some blacks and some whites and some greys and a threshold adjustment will make everything either black or white. So I'll choose layer, new adjustment layer, threshold and here's that little new layer dialog. I'm just going to click OK. Now. The threshold level here, the slider, we drag in one direction to make everything more white and drag in the other direction to grab the blacks. And what we're really saying to Photoshop is that everything that is 238 or less, you're going to make black and anything that's 238 
to 255 in terms of brightness, you can leave as white. So the further we drag to the right, the more black we get. The further we drag to the left, the more white we get. Here, everything that is greater than 1 in terms of threshold level, so from 1 to 255 in terms of brightness, is now white. So these are effectively just the blacks. Now, we want a good mix here, so I'm going to wind this up. And I found that something around the 165 to 170 level was pretty good here. I'm just going to type in 170. But you know, again, this is not something that has to be specific. You're just looking for a good mix. So I'm going ready to now, and I can close that dialog. Now what I want to do is to actually get rid of the whites in the image. So what I'm going to do is flatten this. I'm going to merge this down so that the threshold adjustment layer is actually applied to the image. I probably should have just done an adjustment, but I'm going to press Control or Command E. So now we just have a single layer. This is important because I want to now get rid of the whites. So I'm going to choose Select and then Color Range because this is a great tool for getting selections that are based on a color. And here, if I want to get the whites, I'm just going to go here and select Highlights. And this will select the highlights in the image. And then I can set a fuzziness and a range. Now, I found that a fuzziness of 0 and a range of 255 was pretty good. I got quite a lot of detail here. So these are the whites I'm going to select. Actually, today I'm backing this off a bit. Let's take it back to about 220. Again, it's a choice that you make determined on what you see in the image at a particular time. But this is pretty good for me, so I'm going to click OK. So right now I have the white selected. So what I'm going to do is just press the Delete key. And what that's going to do is remove all the whites from the image. So we're just left with the blacks. And now I'm going to choose Select and Deselect. Or I could press Control or Command D because that just deselects the selection. Let's see how far we've come. To do this, I'm going to hold the Control key as I click on the new layer icon because that just adds a new layer below this layer. I'm just going to fill this with a color so we can see where we are. And I have a real affinity for turquoise. So let's just Alt Backspace Option Delete. Now. One problem, obviously, is that we really wanted a white texture and we've got a black texture. But apart from that, it's looking pretty good. So what I need to do now is to just invert this layer. Taking this layer and then saying, everything that is white, I want to be black. And everything that's black, I want to be white. Well, Control or Command I, Invert. And there is our texture. Now, if this is not quite enough texture in some places for you, that is easily solved. Let's go and get the Lasso tool. And let's Lasso select some of the texture. This is the texture area that's a bit light on. So I'm actually selecting it. And now I'm going to choose Layer New Layer via Copy. So what that does is it makes a duplicate of that particular piece of texture on a new layer. You can see this is the texture layer, and this is the extra bit of texture, if you like. But it's right on top, so it's having absolutely no effect at all because it's right on top of the pre-existing piece of texture. But you know what? If I start moving it, it's going to affect the layer underneath. It's going to actually affect the texture by making it look like we've got more texture. So I can just put that in position and just click to accept it. And if I want a bit more over here, I'm just going to duplicate this layer again because I've already got a nice piece of sort of organic texture. And I'm just going to put it in place and just rotate it. I'm rotating it and sizing it so I don't get sort of repeated elements or what looks like repeated elements in the texture. So I'm just going to place it in position and click the check mark. So now I have a quite detailed piece of texture. So I'm just going to grab all these three texture layers and merge them with Control or Command E. I can turn off my background now because I really only had that there so that I could see exactly what my texture looks like because otherwise it's really, really hard to see what it is. And now if I want to, I could just save this out. But I actually want a square. 
page. So I'm just going to go in here and whoops, select the crop tool. I'm going to do a one to one ratio. I'm going to make sure it's positioned in a nice position. Well, that's pretty good. Click OK. And now I can save this out as a PNG file. To save it as a PNG file, File, Save As, and make sure it's PNG. Now the reason why we use PNG is firstly it's acceptable to most Office applications and in actual fact most applications can handle PNG. The other thing is that unlike JPG, PNG stores transparency. So we're going to get white or transparent. If we actually save this as a JPEG file, oh, tragedy would strike because it would just end up all white. So we're going to lose all our texture if we save it as a JPEG. But PNG, really, really good. Texture one. Okay, and click Save. Okay, so there's the first of our texture images. Let's just shrink that down. And let's go and get the second texture. For the second texture, we're going to create that texture that's on an angle. And I'm starting off with this scratch plastic image. It's an awesome image. I use it a lot. It really has been quite helpful because it has a lot of vertical lines on it. And to make those angled, we're just going to rotate the image. But right now, we need to create the texture. So first thing, we're going to, again, take the lock off this background layer so that we have a regular layer. Now this is green and white, so I want to make it more black and white. So I'm going to choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Curves. Because Curves is going to allow me to isolate lights and darks in this image to do something with. And what I want to do is to bring the light areas up. So I want to drag inwards here to make the lighter areas light. And now what I want to do is to drag inwards here to make the darker areas dark because I want a lot of contrast here. And what I'm doing is just fiddling around with these two sliders and focusing on the light areas because they're going to be my scratches. This time we're not going to invert it. We're actually going to go for the white areas. So what's white here now is our scratch texture. So I'm thinking I'm going to get my square texture. Well, actually it's going to be a diamond shape because we want it on an angle out of this area here. So I'm looking at this area and it's pretty good. So I'm going to accept that. Now I'm going to actually merge these. I've used an adjustment layer. Again, I probably would have been just as good to do image adjustments curve. Same effect, but now I need to merge these two layers. Click the top layer, Control or Command E to merge down. Now I want this black and white. Again, it's sort of dark greeny blue and white. To make it black and white, image adjustments desaturate. And that just makes it black and white. Now like we did previously, we're actually not going to use a filter on this. We're going straight away to get rid of our blacks. And to select the blacks, we're going into Select Color Range. Because as well as selecting highlights, we can also select shadows, shadows i.e. blacks. Now here we're looking at a color range. I'm just going to dial down the fuzziness and dial up the range and see what we're getting. Well, let's see where we need it to be actually. Fuzziness needs to be about at 20% and the color range about 70 or so. I'm looking in this area here to see my selection and just determine how complex it is going to be and how much detail I'm going to get out. Let's settle for 70 on this and say 19 or 20 on the fuzziness. And if I'm happy, click OK. Now we have a selection of the blacks on the image. We can get rid of them by just pressing the Delete key. And then I'm going to deselect the selection with either Select, Deselect or Control D. Of course, Command D on the Mac. Let's see what this looks like so far. Control click on this icon to add a layer below. If you just add the layer on top, that's fine. Just drag it below. That's not a problem. Click on the layer, or Backspace, or Option Delete to fill it with color. Now, we're pretty good here. We've got a slight problem in that we've still got some darker pixels, but I'm really liking the texture that we've managed to get out of here. So if we want to make light pixels dark, we're going back to our threshold adjustment. So click on this layer, and this time let's choose Image Adjustments Threshold. 
This is just going to put the threshold adjustments direct onto the layer. We're not going to be messing around with an adjustment layer. And what I want to do here is to make everything white. So anything that's on this layer needs to be white. So I'm just dragging the threshold level all the way to zero. So anything that is 0 to 255 in terms of lightness is now going to be white. End of story. So that's allowed us to take a mix of gray and white pixels and make them all white. OK, so there's our texture. Really, that's all there is to it. What I need to do now, though, is to rotate this so I can crop it. So I'm going to choose Image, Image Rotation, Arbitrary. And I'm thinking that probably something like 45 to 55 degrees rotation will be pretty good. So let's just try that out. And that's got the lines coming in at an angle. I'm really quite happy with that. And now we can crop the image. So let's go to the Crop tool. And before we actually do that, let's just zoom out so we can see everything more clearly. Let's get the Crop tool and we want a one-to-one -one crop here. Now I'm just going to drag over to create my crop rectangle. I'm really not liking the new Crop tool in Photoshop. In fact, I don't like it at all. OK, so let's just position this so our one-to-one -one crop is over the blue area. So we've got all filled pixels here. And when I'm happy, I can just click to select that. Let's zoom in again so we can set at a larger size. And this is now our texture. So we've got this sort of lined stamped texture that allows us to create a sort of stamped scratched effect on an image. So as we did before, we're going to turn off this background layer because we just want to save the whites. And we want to save this out as a PNG file. File, Save As. And again, we're going to save this as a PNG image to retain that transparency. Texture to PNG. So there we have our transparent textures. We can use these in any application, including Microsoft Office applications. And of course, we can also use them in Photoshop. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.